So one of the reason why we are not progressing in our Vipassana practice is that we are not really practicing very diligently. Yeah. So it's relatively easy to practice two hours per day, but it is much more harder to actually practice for those two hours diligently. Right. And by diligently, I mean like practicing the way we supposed to be practicing. Right. The practicing the way we were taught to be practicing. So basically, actually, you are observing the sensation. Actually, you are observing the sensation with equanimity and learning to see them, see them, learning to see the nature of impermanence of those sensations. Right. So, if we are able to diligently put the effort to practice the Vipassana, we can progress in the practice relatively fast. Right. It doesn't take that much time, but it's just that one thing we, we cannot do that. And the second thing, a part of our mind makes obstacle for us to progress in the practice, to practice really diligently. So in this video, let's take a look at a little bit more deeper. How come we are not able to practice diligently? Right. What obstacle comes in the between? that kind of blocks us in terms of growing in our practice. So one thing is sometimes it does happen that our life becomes too hectic, right? And then it creates the conditions because the mind is so active that when we sit down for practice, it's really hard to practice, right? Sometimes it does happen and it's kind of a fine if this happens and it generally happens for like a short period of time, right? So generally fine in those times we are not able to practice more diligently because mind is just too active to work with, right? But the most of the time, what really happens is, at least in my observation, there is a pleasure in some kind of a subtle dullness, right? What I mean is, we when we sit down and try to practice, right? Putting the effort to learn to see the sensation and their nature of impermanent and equanimous and seeing that equanimously, equanimously there's an effort in that, right? And that effort doesn't feel pleasant. And our natural tendency is whatever doesn't feel pleasant, we are not naturally inclined to do that. Yeah. So there's a natural tendency to not put the effort. On the other hand, there is a pleasure in that dullness when we are not putting any effort, when we are just sitting through it, right? The same kind of pleasure we get when we are scrolling through, you know, YouTube short or Instagram or, you know, all these kind of social media apps. There is a pleasure in that kind of a subtle dullness, right? When we are not doing anything, I mean, when we are not putting any effort and whatever is going on is going on, uh, kind of a feeling, right? So naturally, our mind, makeup of our mind is such that it is going to resist any kind of intentional effort. On the other hand, it is going to naturally move towards dullness and not doing any effort, right? So we have to intentionally put more effort, right? We have to be, so it, that's the, that's what makes it difficult, right? That's what I think Goenkaji was saying in some discourse also, that it is much harder to train the mind than win the battles and all these things. Because it's really difficult difficult to do this for a prolonged period of time, right? To keep setting the intention, to keep putting the effort while mind is kind of designed to do completely opposite thing, right? So we have to be clear about this, right? This is like an effortful thing that we actually have to be renewing that intention and effort in order to kind of continue doing, continue practicing, yeah? So, at least that's how it, it kind of, if I observe my own mind, that's how I see it. 
right? If you don't put the effort, if you don't put the intention, naturally you're going to fall into a kind of a dullness, which is pleasant and not going to put effort to kind of observe the sensation. And that leads to not really growing in the Vipassana practice. Even when you're not really putting the effort, right? Just sitting through like one or one hour morning, evening does create significant mindfulness, right? It has like positive effect. It has like significant positive effects, even just sitting through the meditation, right? You start becoming aware of the mind more and more. But the fruit of the Vipassana is not going to be, you know, achieved because the causes are not being created, right? So if there is no cause, then there is not going to be effect, right? So we have to be mindful about this, right? It's not enough to just practice for two hours, but we have to be practicing diligently for those two hours. Yeah. And also like we have to create the right conditions, right? For example, if our life is not very aligned with the precepts, right? That creates a condition which First of all, when you sit down in the meditation, the mind becomes active, right? And then there is just lack of inspiration to practice altogether, right? If your life is not aligned with the precepts. Same thing if you are enjoying, if you are too much into the sense-oriented pleasures, any kind of sense, right? The food, the music, the sex, any kind of sense-oriented pleasure. If you are enjoying, if you are too much into that, it creates an attachment inside yourself and the craving toward those sensations. But when you sit down for meditation, it is going to be, you're not going to be inspired to practice meditation. Yeah. It has like a counter effect on your state of mind to be able to practice. But if we are acting out of alignment towards precepts and if you're not that much engaged, in, engaged into senses and we are keep renewing our intention, we can actually practice diligently and that leads to be leads to much faster results in the vipassana yeah 